Hi, I'm Jay Gronke, founder of The Balanced Runner, and I'm here today with another stuck at home running form tip. So today I want to talk about what it means if your foot turns inward when you run. For most people that's just one foot, although it could possibly for you be both. Um, and this is not on a lot of people's radar as a problem, uh, but it is actually something that you should take seriously, and um, there are ways that you can improve that movement pattern. So if you missed my previous video on feet turned out, which people are much more attuned to being a problem, um, please go back. Actually, the link to that video will be in the description below. So just click more on the description and or show more and you'll see the free resource that I have for you to help you address this in yourself. And also you'll see the link to the previous video. Um, also, while you're at it, click like, Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and click the bell icon so you get notifications. So what's it about if your foot turns in? Um, most of the time, people do this by turning the whole leg. So um, not just the foot itself turned in, but the whole leg a bit turns inwards. And maybe you can see that my knee turns in. Um, and that means that you land like this, instead of like that, or that even. Um, and there are four main consequences to that. Uh, the first of them is that you get excessive braking force. So braking as in the brakes on a car, as in it stops your momentum or reduces your momentum so that then you have to put in <laughs> more energy for your next step to get yourself going again. So it, it's, it makes you spend more energy when you run. Um, uh, if you think about in skis or ice skates, what you do to stop yourself, you turn your foot out and you push outwards, you're doing something like that when you land like this. Even though the foot is in line, um, uh, there's a bit of outward force and this is also, there's no, there's no give in the outside of your foot um, the way that there is in your arch. And in fact, it stiffens the whole side of your body when you land like this. So when you turn the leg in, that tends to move the hip out and down, tends to contract your obliques on this side, uh, which holds you open on this side, so it bends you a little bit this way, um, making this side not able to give particularly well anywhere along the chain. The, knee's not, the knee has to bend a bit inwards, it does, there's resistance to that, the ankle has to bend a bit inwards, there's resistance to that, and you're, you don't have the give in your spine that allows you to compress a little bit here. So all those are opportunities, uh, missed opportunities for energy storage in your landing that would turn into a spring forward again when you take off. And it's also a lot of stress along that side. And so people who land like this very often, don't get paranoid if this hasn't happened to you, but, um, but it, it may already have, very often uh, get injuries somewhere along that side of their body. It can be hamstring, it can be sacroiliac joint, um, it can be knee, uh, it can be sole of the foot. There's stress that's going to manifest somewhere. Uh, second thing that happens is you underpronate, so, which means you're not compressing or flattening your arch the way it's supposed to happen when you land in running. So um, pronation is a friend. <laughs> it needs to happen. That's part of how you absorb the impact. And uh, like the way a spring absorbs compression, gets flattened and then springs back. That's really important in running. It's really valuable for you. And when you land like this, the arch stays lifted. It doesn't get pressed down. Um, and then you also miss your big toe. So when you take off, that as you approach toe off, it should bend your big toe. Um, but if you're landing with your foot turned inwards, you are almost certainly not taking off from your big toe. You're taking off from probably your third, fourth, or even fifth toes um, this way. And uh, that, those toes don't have the same effect on your arch that your big toe does. Your big toe, when that bends, it shortens your arch and then that helps your um, put energy through your big toe into the ground, energy that was originally stored in the arch. And that's, again, part of this whole mechanism in your foot for absorbing 
the energy of landing and return and and the compression of mid stance really and returning it to you to help propel you into the next step without you having to depend entirely upon your muscles for that and so it's really kind of a big deal to not be using your big toe uh, when you run um, not and then not only that but also when you're coming off of your smaller outer toes that pushes your body this way. You see how I had to cross my leg over to land? Uh, because, and that's the main problem with that, is that um, you're supposed to be, this leg is in swing, you need to land on it next, and it's supposed to be over here. <laughs> now you probably aren't running like this, <laughs> but um, you may be, a, a people who turn one foot in, uh, noticeably often give the impression that they're running slightly sideways. The feet don't cross over, but the, you, but the body turns a little bit to cope with the fact that um, you're coming off the, the little toes and therefore outwards, and so the, you end up running a little like that, uh, which is not optimal from any point of view because then the other leg, you're having to use your inner thighs too much, and you're effectively forcing the other leg to land with the toes turned out, which, while not disastrous, isn't optimal, especially if that's not how your body's built. Um, then you miss the big toe on that side, too, for the opposite reason. Um, so uh, all of this is, uh, all of these four reasons or why you should actually give some attention to this if it's something that you do. Now, I've said that it tends to happen because you're turning your whole leg inward a bit. Uh, and so, in the most basic sense, the way to fix it is to stop doing that, to let the leg turn outward a little bit. And it's honestly less of a big deal to have the foot be ever so slightly turned out, because then you can still come off the big toe uh, than it is to have your foot ever so slightly turned in. Um, so I would err on the side of turning out. However, it's not quite so simple because there's a, um, because where your weight is over that foot is probably a big factor in, in, in forcing you to turn the leg in. And let me show, let me sit down on the ground to show you how that works. So, if you see the soles of my feet here, um, they're both point. Let me try to get straight onto the camera. Oops, it's showing me backwards. So um, if I relax my feet, my weight is in between my two legs. My both feet fall open a bit. That's just what legs do when they're relaxed. Um, if I shift my hips slightly to the left, even though I've just, my legs are still completely relaxed, look, my right foot is turning out, my left foot is now parallel. And ditto if I do it, even though the sofa's to the other side. So it's happening, let me see if, let me try to keep my hips, hip joints relaxed the whole time. So you can see that how I move determines do the feet turn out or in. And so if you tend to have one foot that's turned in, your weight is probably, your weight, meaning your trunk, is probably over there. And it's probably not quite so simple as your hips just being over there. Um, and this is where the, um, me sitting down, I don't, I'm not quite able to show you everything, but it's also probably that your upper waist, your lower ribs are shifted over to that side. And so it's actually this that you need to deal with in order to be able to turn this leg out. Because I can tell it to turn out, but the minute I think about something else, it's going to go back there because that's what the entire rest of my body is, um, is making it do. And you need to get yourself to here as your neutral so that you can actually shift your weight equally both directions because your weight doesn't stay in the middle when it run, when you run, it moves side to side. It just needs to move fairly equally side to side for your legs to be working fairly symmetrically. 
And so I'm putting my best lesson for dealing with this issue in the description below. It's called Perfecting Your Foot Strike. It has many um, benefits, many functions, but one of them is controlling your weight shift in this side to side plane and helping you let go of a really strong habit of keeping yourself over on one side all the time. So definitely, if you haven't done that lesson before, uh, give it a go now and see if you don't feel that your legs work a little more symmetrically afterwards. Um, if you do this with both legs, uh, then uh, you then still give my lesson a try because you, you need more shifting side to side and that's going to involve letting uh, letting your legs in turn turn out a little bit more one and then the other. Um, and so that's a whole different exploration and I don't have a ton of resources for you in this video, though I still recommend you, again, you try the lesson that I'm offering you uh, for free in the description. So uh, we will finish here. I hope this has been helpful to you. Please share it with your running buddies if so. And uh, like I say, click like so that YouTube knows to share this video with other runners who need this information. And I'll be back with another video next Wednesday at 11 a.m. Pacific. See you then.